Hey Discoverers, are you ready to discover the Blue Morpho Butterfly, the Howler Monkey, the Toucan, the Boa Constrictor, and the Poison Dart Frog? Creepy crawlies. Insects, spiders, worms, and other invertebrates make up almost 95% of all animal species in the Amazon rainforest. One survey confirmed that about 50,000 insect species live in every one square mile of the rainforest. Scientists have also calculated that ants, wasps, and termites equal more than half of the total weight of animals in the Amazon. So put together, they far outweigh all the big vertebrates, such as mammals, birds, and reptiles. So today we're gonna to learn about this blue morpho, morpho butterfly. The Amazon rainforest has at least 3,000 butterfly species, the most vibrant of which are the shimmering morphos. An owl butterfly tries to stay hidden, but if a predator closes in, the big butterfly opens its wings to sew two large eye spots that make it look like the face of a scary owl. See, he does look like an owl, see him? All right. Here's a really pretty up close picture of the blue morpho butterfly. And he is going to be found in the emergent layer of the rainforest. Blue morpho butterfly, a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. So just like other butterflies, this one is going to start off. A mother blue morpho butterfly lays eggs. When the eggs hatch, out come caterpillars. A blue morpho butterfly lives for about 115 days. A caterpillar eats and grows, and then it makes a chrysalis around its body. The chrysalis is a covering that protects the caterpillar inside while it becomes a butterfly. A brand new blue morpho butterfly comes out of the chrysalis. It stretches its wings. Soon the pretty blue butterfly flies away. This is an insect. It's about the size of your mother's hand. It drinks the juice of rotting fruit. It does not make any sounds. And it's unknown how many le eggs are laid at a time. So we don't know how many babies can come out of just one of them. All right, next, let's learn about the howler monkey. Amazon monkeys. Some 130 species of monkey live in the Amazon rainforest. They eat leaves, fruits, and insects. The monkeys of the Amazon belong to a group called New World monkeys that descended from African monkeys. Unlike their old world relatives, Amazon monkeys have flat noses with nostrils that point sideways. Many species also have a flexible tail that can work as a hand or foot to wrap around the branch, to wrap around branches and grip objects. So this right here, there's a howler monkey. Any guesses to why he's called a howler monkey? Do you think he's really, really quiet? Or do you think he howls really loud? Yeah, he's really loud. He can grow to be about 35 inches tall. Howler monkeys are not, are not only the largest and noisiest monkeys in the Amazon rainforest, but also the loudest land animals. So they're super loud in the Amazon and they're super loud, even more loud than any other animal that we can find on earth. On the land, pardon. Their calls can travel up to 2.5 miles through the forest. They use their large, flexible throats to boost their volume when calling from the treetops. Males do most of the calling to attract females or to warn other males to stay away. Here's get a good look at the howler monkey. Meet the loudest animal in the rainforest. A group of monkeys is called a troop. As soon as they wake up, howler monkeys roar. They roar again before they go to sleep at night. These noisy animals want others to know where they are and to stay away. A howler monkey's cry sounds something like a lion's roar or very long, loud burp. 
It can be heard two to three miles away. Howler monkeys are, are arboreal. That means they live in the trees. We're gonna find these monkeys living in the canopy layer of our rainforest. They're mammals. So they're about the size of a two-year-old, not including its tail. It eats leaves, fruits, nuts, and flowers. It has an ear-splitting roar, and it has one baby at a time. You should really look up howler monkeys on YouTube and check out a video of them <laughs> making their really, really loud calls. All right. Let's talk about the poison dart frog. These are beautiful frogs. And one thing about them that I'll just tell you right up front, look, these can be all different sizes and colors. So when you're coloring your poison dart frog for your artwork today, you can choose whatever colors that you would like for it to be. And why do you think these are all really brightly colored? I mean, they're kind of small, like something might want to eat them, right? Hmm, do you think maybe that bright color is there for a reason? Frogs, toads, and salamanders are amphibians. These are animals that live in water and on land. Yet most amphibians cannot survive for long without water, which is abundant in the Amazon rainforest. A huge range of amphibians thrive there, from worm-like creatures that burrow through damp soil to frogs that are poisonous to touch pretty poisonous. Poison dart frogs are named after the Amazonian hunters who use the powerful toxins in the skin of the species to make poison darts for killing monkeys. These toxins come from the chemicals in ants and other insects that the frogs eat. The toxic skin is brightly colored, which serves as a warning, warning, stay away from me. You don't want to eat me. Hey, Predator, I'm not worth your time. So this is a blue poison dart frog. Scientists think poison dart frogs may be poisonous because of some of the insects they eat. This little frog gleams like a gem on the forest floor. They're amphibians. They're about as long as a child's finger. They eat termites, ants, and other small insects. They make chirps and buzzes, and they lay two to six eggs at a time. The blue poison dart frog's bright color warns predators, don't eat me or you might get sick. The frog's skin oozes a strong poison that can kill other animals. Female blue poison dart frogs lay eggs on the forest floor. When the eggs hatch, hatch into tadpoles, the mother and father carry them on their backs to small ponds of water, often in bromelade plants. So that's something pretty cool that they do, that they actually lay their eggs and then the parents hang around and wait for them to hatch into tadpoles and then the mom and dad will go and get them and bring them up into um, little pools of water that pond inside those bromulides that we talked about. The poison dart frog tadpole has sprouted legs but still has a tail. As the tadpole grows, their bodies change. They sprout legs. Their tails get smaller and smaller. After several months, they look like frogs and climb out of the pool. So here's some more examples if you want to check out how you might want to color yours for your art today. There are more than a hundred kinds of poison dart frogs in Central and South American rainforests. Here are a few. All right, now we're going to talk about the toucan. Sorry, wrong book. Let's actually go ahead and talk about the bow constrictor.
So there's different types of constrictors and the reason that they're called constrictors is because they squeeze, they wrap themselves around and constrict and hold tight their prey before they eat them. So this is an emerald tree boa. This is one you can find in the canopy section of the Amazon. There are other ones that are like this brick red color, some like just regular boas have more of a brown color. So when you're coloring your constrictor for your artwork today, you can choose which color you'd like to use. This snake is named after a green gemstone called an emerald. The emerald tree boa slithers through the canopy, coiling itself around high tree branches. When it rains, water pools in its coils. The snake uses this water to drink. So he'll be all wrapped up and it'll rain down and it'll get caught in there and he'll slurp it right up. Like the green anaconda on page 22, I'll go back and show you him as well. The emerald tree boa is a constrictor. When it spots a lizard or a small mammal, it lunges and then wraps itself around the animal and squeezes to kill it before eating it. It's a reptile. It's longer than an average size man. It eats lizards, squirrels, and monkeys. It doesn't make any sounds as far as we know of, and it can have to uh, as much as 20 live babies at one time. So again, you'll find him up in the canopy. Let's go back and see. About another, this is the green anaconda. He's also a constrictor. This one has a really big mouth and he can go weeks without eating after having a really big meal. And he can weigh up to 550 pounds because he's so large. I'm gonna show you another cool picture in another book. Sorry, you have to, you know how we are, we're at Discovery and I have all my books around me and I have to flip through them. Here is a cool picture. See this? Can you see? Look, there's a crocodile and see this big constrictor? He's wrapped all around him and squeezing him. He can be 16 and a half feet long. The green anaconda, the world's largest snake, spends most of its time in shallow water ready to ambush prey that wanders too close to the water's edge. The anaconda shown here has captured a caiman, which is a fearsome predator. The snake kills its victim by squeezing it so tightly that it stops breathing. Like all snakes, it swallows its prey head first whole. So these green anacondas that are constrictors, they like to be around the water, so you'd find them lower in water areas. But that like green emerald boa constrictor, he's green. Why? He's up in the canopy, right? He might blend in. You might think he's a vine or something growing up there. So his prey might not notice him slithering around. And here's a really cute picture of a tapir that we talked about earlier. I thought I'd show that to you. All right. Back to the toucan. So birds of the Amazon. We already talked about macaw. And there are about 1,500 bird species that live in the Amazon rainforest. They range from macaws, which are the world's biggest parrots, to hummingbirds. Many water birds also live in the region's vast wetlands and along its riverbanks. Forest birds have plenty of places to hide, but the males can use their bright plumage when they want to be seen, especially when they want to attract mates. So this is a green-billed toucan. So some of them have black, some of them are, you know, white here and then all black bodies. So they do kind of vary in what they'll look like. This green-billed toucan, this toucan's long, chunky bill makes up about a quarter of its body length. However, the bill is light, and it's actually made of a spongy bone covered in a coat of keratin. Remember, that's that same material that's like on our fingernails? The bill has rough edges that are useful for cracking nuts and peeling fruits. Toucans rarely fly far, preferring to hop from branch to branch.
All right, here's another Toco Toucan. This bird has a brightly colored bill. He's a bird. He's about as long as a human baby. He eats berries, fruits, and eggs. He makes lard barks, croaks, and toots. He can have one to five babies at a time. The toka toucan uses its sharp bill to slice through banana peels. The edges of its bill are notched, just like a saw. The toko toucan's big bill looks heavy, but right, we already learned that it's not. The inside of it contains a lot of air, which makes it light. The toucan uses its long bill to pluck berries and fruits on the tip of a branch. The toucan's feet have two toes that face forward and two that face backward. This helps them balance on branches when they're looking for food. Sometimes these birds play games like catch with fruit. And you're gonna find these up in the canopy layer. All right, friends. So I hope you enjoyed learning all about the animals and the layers of the rainforest and the things that we can find there. And remember, there are thousands of more things that live in the Amazon rainforest that we did not talk about this week. We just highlighted a few. And if you're with your mom and dad and you wanna go search around on the internet for some more pictures, maybe hear these animals make some sounds, um, we would normally have done that in class but I'm trying to limit what I give you guys so it's not too much and overwhelming. So let me know if you enjoyed the videos. Miss Abby and I are just kind of playing around with how we want this to work for discovery with our distance learning. So give us some feedback. All right, thanks, bye.